Good morning, neighbors. It's Pastor Chad Trop here in my dojo here, my office at the Fox Street Church of God yet again at 10 o'clock in the morning. And I want to say uh, I miss all of you. Uh, I've been reaching out to some of you. You've been reaching out to me. Really appreciate uh, the encouragement, the cards. Um, really meaningful uh, to, to reach out to, and be thinking of my family and just want to show my appreciation. We had a wonderful meeting last night with the the leaders of the church and I'll tell you what, it's one of the coolest meetings I've ever been a part of and some um, cool ideas of ministries that uh, when we are able to gather together we're going to be um, with this idea of rededicating and relaunching the Fox Street Church of God that uh, the, the way that we did things in the past and the way things that we'll be doing things in the future will be more geared towards outward ministry uh, for the Church of God. Um, give you a perfect example, one of the decisions that we are working on in years past, we've had what's called the Name Your Own Price Sale, which was one of the fundraisers that we used to basically for one of our committees to be able to support certain different missionaries. Um, this year, uh, we're leaning towards actually not calling it the Name Your Own Price Sale, which we usually do in the spring, but we'll do it sometime um, in the late summer or early far, fall where um, the money, there, there'll be no money. There won't be naming your own price. It'll simply be individuals that are coming in and grabbing the, the things that they want or they need with no idea of, of asking for any money for that, but ma meeting the needs of our community and surrounding. And so um, I've read a really, really cool book. It's, a, it's an old book. Um, it's something that, uh, a book that we had to read uh, in one of my classes here as I work towards my master's degree. And um, this is an older book. I've had a copy of it. I've read it uh, numerous times. It's called a, a, a New Wind Blowing. And it's by Charles R. Tarr. He had been a pastor for, for many, many years. And he was the pastor at the South Meridian Church of God Um all those years ago and the book is about what was going on uh, during a time during uh, Asbury Seminary as a group of students had gathered together and they had agreed there was six there was one individual that challenged six other individuals to gather together and pray and then from that other groups came together a total of 36 they gathered together and pray and then usually when it was their one hour chapel time uh, of gathering together in worship usually only lasted an hour and it went on for eight days and during that time there was rededication there was the confession of sins there were certain things that they had decided that time and the Holy Spirit moved in a very powerful way that went on uh, what's called uh, an enlightenment time the baptism of the Holy Spirit a revival upon those students there and from that Charles Tarr and a group of other pastors had noticed that and so had asked Asbury Seminary um, if any of the students would come and, sh and share. And there were three names that were going. Uh, Charles Tarr picked the, the third uh, name that was on that list and a group of students along with that individual came and shared with the South Meridian Church. Uh, and from that time, um, uh, each and every service after that began to increase and increase in attendance as there was sharing and witnessing and people rededicated their lives to to Jesus. There was confession of sins. There were ministers that had repaired their relationships with one another. There were churches that began to heal and it just got on for weeks and weeks and weeks. There was this uh, revival going on in and South Meridian and it was reaching the surrounding communities and as I was reading that book and as I think about what we're going through in this COVID-19 pandemic and as we begin to look what the church is going to look like after this um, one of the things that I'm encouraging everyone that's listening to my voice here this morning is to begin doing these things as I was thinking about uh, what those uh, students did there in Asbury uh, back in 1970 and, and what they began to do, they were actually following Scripture very, very closely in this. And, and because of that, God rewarded them by the baptism of His Spirit. And, and it just ignited a passion and a fire that just not didn't affect the Asbury Seminary, but a lot of different, even the Church of God Reformation movement in the early 70s. Many of you are familiar with this verse. And it's found in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And the familiarity um, with this, this verse is, 
because of um, it's used in times even for a nation. But I want you to contextually understand what um, what is being said in this this scripture. So I want to go with verse 13 first, but then verse 14 is going to be our primary part of emphasis uh, moving on this morning. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, starting at verse 13, it says, When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people, that's chapter 13, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Now, there's some things that we need to understand where this verse of Scripture falls into uh, our reading today. Now, this is at the time where Solomon finishes the temple that uh, that his father David had envisioned to be the house of God. Uh, and, and Solomon completes it, and this is in the in the parts of the chapter in Second Chronicles where Solomon dedicates the temple to the Lord. And, and so, uh, it, so we must understand what this is, what contextually means when we read this. Is it talking about a nation? Well, it's talking about people called by His name. This is meaning people who call out to the Lord. Because this temple was dedicated to be a place of worship. And so, in this definition, this is where the Lord appears to Solomon. And this is a conversation between Solomon and the Lord. And so, as we look at this verse of scripture, what it really really referenced is less to as a nation, but individuals in their relationship with the Lord in their act of worship. There is something in this statement that's made to Solomon by God about even at this time, as they're dedicating this house to the Lord, that uh, there's some commands that, that he, he, he is pointing Solomon to our human behavior and what tends to happen with us personally. Now, when you look at verse 14, preceding to that in 13, it says, When I send a plague among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Boy, if that isn't something powerful for today as we're going through this COVID-19 pandemic. Now, I'm not saying that God sent this plague But we at least have to consider the possibility that it might be a wonderful opportunity for each and every one of us that call Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior to humble ourselves and pray. That we set aside selfish ambition and really dedicate the temple, this, and humble service to God and humble servanthood to allow our vessels to be rid uh, of self and be able to, to give ourselves to God. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face, I will forgive their sins. And some of the things that we do, we don't even recognize that they're very sinful. But look at the things that can happen within our relationships, uh, within our churches, within our communities. Yesterday I shared uh, the the deeds of the flesh, and you know those deeds of the flesh. I shared with you yesterday uh, out of Galatians, but you know it talks about immorality, idolatry, strife, disputes, envying, impurity, sorcery, jealousy, dissensions, drunkenness, sensuality, uh, outbursts of anger, factions, and carousing. Um, all of those are very divisive behavior. Those are selfish ambitions. Those are things that we focus more about ourselves and less about others if you look about the deeds of the flesh and when you think about the deeds of the 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 spirit the fruits of the spirit you think of love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control and against those things there's no law and and so as i think about what we are to do today um i don't care if it's a church of god congregation i really don't care whatever christian church it is as long as they're not perverting the the scriptures Right now, I think it's every denomination, every movement, I think it would be a wonderful time for all to be unified together and call upon the name of Jesus for personal reasons, 
seek uh, for him to seek every recess and, and every part of our being to make sure that we're growing in the Lord as much as we should be, uh, making sure we're doing the, the right things, doing the will of God and not only not doing our own will. Um, and I think every church should be humbling themselves right now. And so I think that uh, I'm asking uh, at least the Fox Street Church of God and anybody that spends time um, watching any of these videos and devotions, I'm asking that everyone at 7 o'clock tonight Eastern Time to take a portion of time uh, to go into your prayer closet and, and take a time to just pray. Pray for yourself. Pray, pray to, to allow the Holy Spirit to search every recess of your being. If there's any behavior or thoughts or if there's unforgiveness within your soul, if there's hurts that you're hanging on to, um, let God deal with those things. Let us humble ourselves that when we come out of this that we can be useful vessels, that we can carry the full water, that we're not just cracked vessels that keep on leaking the Holy Spirit, but we're we're, we're full vessels being able to help individuals in a world that is hurting greatly right now and meeting the needs of our community and our families. Because right now, before this whole pandemic hit, we were in a nation that was divided. Many of our churches were divided. We were in a world that was fighting and divided. And I'm not saying that it's going to be uh, 100% better, but the potential for us to be powerful in the spirit to help the, the world that is lost in this, to give them hope and love, there's no law against that. And so I'm looking forward to the, the ministry, the friendships, the relationships, to humble ourselves and put ourselves in other people's shoes to understand that their struggles might be different than ours. They might be similar than ours. But irregardlessly, there's a soul that's in each and every one of them that's in need of help and need of saving, that needs connection to Jesus Christ. And we won't do that just by simply hammering them over the head and say the Bible says this. But we will do it as we live it out through our lives, out of love, out of peace, out of patience, and be able to help those people in this time and be able to even help grow ourselves. We become so inward focused. We become, even as churches, we, we get stuck within those four walls that we, we lose the community that's outside. And so um, I pray that after this is all said and done, that we're going to have communities that are united together, that love one another, and don't focus so much on the differences, but actually focus on what we have in common. If our lungs are able to take air, if we have eyes be able to see, if we have ears that are able to hear, that uh, we should be reaching out to each and every soul, irregardless of, of what uh, has happened in their lives. That's the one thing that I find discouraging about small towns as everybody knows, seems to know, seems to know everybody's business. And because of that, it really holds some people down, and I don't think that's fair. Um, we all have a past, and, uh, and the fact of the matter is, I don't like some of the things that I have done in my past, and so, but I, I'm, not, I'm not stuck there. And so if some people want to hold me to the past, that's, that's them. I'm not held in that bondage anymore. I'm growing, and, 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 and I encourage each and every one of you to be growing as well. But I'm reminded... As you go to the, the book of Revelation, now we, we don't oftentimes go to the book of Revelation to, to find words of, uh, of encouragement, but I think there's a lot of words of encouragement in the book of Revelation, especially the future return of Christ and what our work to do uh, as he writes to those seven churches about what uh, the different ages of those churches, about what our responsibilities are. But listen to the, the closing verses of Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. It says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give him a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to him who receives it. Now, if you compare that to what we read in Second Chronicles, that... Um, if he knows our name, and if he if we know him and he knows us, look at the power and and the and the passion that those churches will have. And so, after this is all said and done, I really feel that we need to get back on the proper track. All churches. I'm not just saying the church that I serve now, and we've been doing a lot of good things, and there's been a lot of things that are happening, but. Getting back to making the main thing the main thing, and that's Jesus Christ. That's revealing the love of God to a hurt world. 
And so I'm asking that tonight at 7 o'clock that we'll take the time and all of us together, no matter where we're at in our homes, go to our prayer closet or with our families to humble ourselves and pray that God will heal this land, heal the land of, the, of, our, of our families, our relationships, our wives, our, our husbands, our children. Ask for God to heal that land as well to heal the land of our communities. And in and, and this type of healing, it has a, a trickle-down effect. Once this land here, once this vessel here begins to heal, and it begins to heal our relationship in our marriages, and it heals our relationship with our children, and our relationship within our churches, and our relationship with our communities, we really see the power of God working through these earthen vessels to do some powerful things because he's going to give us that hidden manna. He's going to give us the food and the desire that we need, the proper things that we need to be able to do the things that God would like done in this lost world. And so it's going to be challenging. And we're going to be able to look at ministry with new eyes, fresh eyes, to help a world, to help our neighbors, but to do so not with just... Um, stamping our time card of we've done a good deed, but no, helping hurt souls, helping er, er, hurt earthen vessels, revealing that there are people out there that truly care and love them. And so I pray that this time that we've been away, not able to gather together, that you've been taking some personal time, that you've been humbling yourself, and you've been calling on the, the name of God. You've been calling in the name of Jesus for him to heal this land and to heal our name. We can pray for our nation, and I encourage that. But let's broaden our spectrum to the world, irregardless of whatever your sex is, whether it's male or female, whatever the color of your skin is. We all breathe the same air. We all have similar types of blood. It's all the same no matter what the type it is. We all function the same way. We have minds that work the same way. And so let's not focus on how we're different, but let's focus on the souls that make us all unified. We're all given the same spirit and the same souls by the same God. And so that's why Jesus came in the first place, not to save just his people, Israel, but to save the whole world. And I pray that we understand that, that we don't become closed off to our communities within our church walls, that we truly will become the church outside of those walls. And so I pray that you will pray with me tonight at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, and that we'll pray, to pray together, and that the Lord our God, in the name of Jesus, will hear our prayers and begin to heal our lands. My land, your land, our family's land, our community's land, our state's land, our nation's land, our world's land. God didn't save his or didn't didn't send his son to condemn the world, but to save it. And we need to remember that. And so would you pray with me here this morning? Heavenly Father, we come before you and we pray that you will heal our lands, heal our minds. Heal our emotions. Heal our feelings. Heal our everything. Our past hurts. The things that we struggle with. If we have a, an attitude of unforgiveness, heal that. Help us to realize what you have can forgive us and what you have forgiven of us. Let us believe on the promises. Let us believe on the sacrifice of Jesus. Let us believe on the blood applied and the, the, the mercy seat. And help us to be, become better people, not selfish people, only thinking of ourselves, but thinking of the world around us as well. And so, Father God, help us to be your church, to be your body. And Jesus, help us to put you to be the head of the church. And as you have put leaders in the church, help us to follow your will and not our own. And so moving forward, I pray, as we prepare to have our hearts be laid bare before you this evening at 7 o'clock. I pray that you would unify the body of believers, that you would heal our lands and heal our communities and impassion us and fill us with your spirit 
to do and be do the good that you're preparing the fields to be done and help us to fulfill your call. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. May you have a wonderful day, and I look forward to speaking with you again. Be blessed in all that you do. Thank you.